Welcome to your favourite day of the week everyone, and throughout history, humans have come up with extremely creative ways to inflict pain on each other through methods of torture, punishment, and worst of all, watching one of my videos. So I've scoured the internet for some of the most brutal and gruesome ways that humans have tried to put other humans out of their misery. So join me on a trip through time as we take a look at three absolutely awful ways that some people have died. So a bit of viewer discretion advice for this one, as it might get a bit gory in some places. So let's see who we have at first on our death roulette. The execution of Gyrgy Doja. So first up we have this chap here, Gyrgy Doja, a Romanian man from the Kingdom of Hungary and in 1514 Pope Leo X issued a papal bull authorising a Hungarian crusade against the Ottomans. I'm hungry. Doja was put in charge of the army and in a few weeks he had gathered a host of roughly 40,000 strong, mainly consisting of the lowest ranking in society such as peasants and students. Now of a group this large, discontent was bound to be common in places, and it soon reared its ugly head as they became annoyed about their current situation. The volunteer army never actually received any supplies of food or weaponry during their time assembled, and as the harvest season approached, the lords ordered that they return to their fields under a threat of violence towards their wives and families. The nobles also failed in providing the army any solid military leadership, which was one of the primary functions if you had higher social status, and the army's anger grew to a point where they began began a war against the ruling class. More and more people began joining the rebellion as they burnt and raided nobles' lands, as well as crucifying many others in their path. Pope Leo's papal bull was revoked in the face of the revolts, and the King of Hungary, Vladislaus II, soon issued a threat to the peasants to return to their lands under pain of death. However, they didn't, and the revolt was now showing signs of revolution. Every vassal of the kingdom was called to quell this rebellion, with many mercenary soldiers being hired from around Europe to crush it. Doja and his army had now captured the fortress city of Snaznad, and signalled his victory by impaling the governor and bishop of the city. Doja continued to seize fortresses and add to his army, and stopping him was now the top priority for the nobles. Doja and his army were soon routed at a battle near Temesvar by an army of 20,000 strong, as his ill-equipped men were no match for heavy cavalry. After the battle, he was captured and sentenced to a brutal death. This is where it gets juicy. He was to sit upon a scolding iron throne and forced to wear a heated crown and hold a boiling hot scepter, mocking his ambition to be king. While he was getting cooked like a chicken, nine rebels who had been starved prior would lead to his mockery throne and one of them was Doja's younger brother, Gurgly, who was cut into three pieces in front of Doja despite pleas to spare his life. Executioners then tore Doja's flesh with burning pliers and ordered the starved rebels to eat the flesh where the pliers had been. Those who refused were hacked to pieces, forcing the others to comply, and Doja eventually died from the trauma that was caused while the rebels who obeyed and ate him were soon released. The revolt was over and roughly 70,000 peasants were tortured during the quelling of it. Woo! So if number one wasn't enough to quell your appetite for gore, maybe number two will help. The execution of Balthazar Gerard. So between the lovely years of 1566 to 1568, a Dutch revolt broke out in the Netherlands between a group of rebels and the Spanish government over numerous political issues. The rebellion was led by this man here, William the Silent or William the Orange. The war raged back and forth for the next years and in 1580 King Philip II of Spain had had enough of William's antics and declared him an outlaw and a pest on the whole of Christianity and the enemy of the human race and he offered a hefty reward for anyone who succeeded in killing him. Enter this man here, Balthazar Gerard, a great admirer of King Philip and on the 10th of July 1584 in the Dutch city of Delft, Gerard jumped from a dark corner and fired two shots at William the Silent, killing him on the spot. Gerard rushed to make an escape, but tripped over a bag of rubbish and was apprehended by the guards, being escorted back to the building under a rain of fists and sword butts. How dare you kill William the Silent, you bastard! Upon his capture, he was interrogated by City Watch, where he showed no remorse, stating, like David, he had slain Goliath of Garth. 
At his trial, he was sentenced to torture and execution that was even extremely savage by the standards at the time. His first night of imprisonment saw his brutal torture begin by him being hung on a pole and then lashed with a whip. His wounds were then smeared with honey with a goat being brought in to lick the honey off with its rough tongue. But even the goat refused to touch Gerard's horrific wounds. Several more tortures were used before his hands and feet were bound together like a ball for the night making it extremely difficult to sleep. The following three days saw him hung on poles with his hands tied behind his back and the 150 kilogram weights attached to each of his big toes in half an hour stints, stretching him out like a cheese string. His feet were then fitted with well oiled shoes which were two fingers shorter than his feet and they were made from uncured dog skin. They were put over a fire and the shoes contracted crushing his feet into stumps and then they were removed and the skin was torn off his feet. His armpits were then branded and he was dressed in an alcohol soaked shirt with burning bacon fat poured over him and sharp nails were stuck between the flesh and nails on his hands and feet. This is getting kinky. Four days after the assassination of William the Silent, he was sentenced to more torture and execution in public view. His right hand was to be burned off with a red hot iron and his flesh was to be torn from his bones with pincers in six different places. He would then be courted and disemboweled alive and his heart torn from his body and thrown in his face. And if that didn't kill him with no heart, he was finally put out of his misery by getting beheaded. The execution of Marco Antonio Bragadine. So for our last one today, this old boy here is Marco Antonio Bragadine. And on the 17th of August in 1571, he was put to a savage death worthy of a Game of Thrones episode. Two years prior in 1569, nice, he was elected captain of the Kingdom of Cyprus before assuming civil governor of the rich port city, Famagusta. At this point he knew a decisive clash with the Ottomans was imminent, so he began working to fortify the city for a defence. September the 17th, 1570 saw Famagusta come under siege with Marco leading the defences. The Ottomans pounded the city walls in a display of absolute sexual barbarity and chroniclers have said it was a garrison of 6,000 defenders defending against 100,000 Turks. The defenders put up a heroic last stand against the far superior army before in July of 1571 the Ottomans breached the walls and overwhelmed the city. With no sign of help Bragadine asked for terms of surrender. The Ottoman commander Mustafa agreed to the condition stating the population could evacuate safely without provocation and on August the 5th Bragadine offered the vacated city to Mustafa. However Mustafa seemingly had a change of heart and accused Bragadine of murdering Turkish prisoners and hiding munitions, pulling a knife on him and then slicing off his right ear and then he ordered his guards to cut off his other ear and his nose. A massacre of all Christians left in the city ensued and Bragadine was thrown in prison for two weeks where he was left with all his wounds festering. He was then paraded through the town in humiliation, carrying sacks of earth and stone on his back before being tied to a galley mast and dunked in the sea repeatedly. Bragadine's misery continued as he was taken to his place of execution in town, tied naked to a column where the Ottomans began to flay him alive. His body was then hacked up and distributed to the army as a war trophy and not being content with that, the Ottomans stuffed his skin with straw like a taxidermy, put it on his military outfit and onto an ox and paraded him through the streets. Despite the humiliation and awful death, Bragadine's incredible resistance against vastly superior forces earned him eternal fame as a Christian martyr and having a tomb erected in San Zanizapola church in Venice. Well that was something. So I hope you've enjoyed three of the most brutal deaths in history and my enthusiasm for people getting brutally savagely massacred. So go and watch some happy puppy videos to cleanse out your mind after this. Like the video if you haven't and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Peace.